Hi, my name is Danny Dematis. I'm a producer, remixer and writer and I'm also an instructor here at Point Blank and I work with people like Rui De Silva and Chloe Howell and Sony Columbia and Wall of Sound. I was brought up in the, in the Slough, Windsor area um, where most of my musical education happened and it was a kind of heady times really because people like Sarah Crantle from San Etienne was a local girl, Andy Weatherall, Tim Dorney from, uh, from Flowered Up and, um, and Johnny Mail, who both subsequently went on to, to do Republica and I worked with both of those. So they were good times. That's my first introduction to music was through that really. I think when I was a kid I used to remember listening to John Peel in my bedroom uh, with the radio under the pillow, which I wasn't allowed to do. And I think that because of that, that kind of informed the kind of music that that I like really, which although it's quite broad based, it tends to be perhaps independent in nature, most of it. And uh, the usual thing happened. I started writing songs. I never really knew how they managed to get the different levels between the, the voice and the guitar. And then I sussed out that perhaps if you use another tape recorder, you could do that. I've been given a tape recorder by my gran and I asked for a tape recorder for Christmas one year from my parents and so I had these two tape recorders and I'd play something on one and then sing something on the other. So I was completely convinced that I'd invented multi-track recording and it was uh, distraught to find out that wasn't actually the case. I think that um, everybody that I kind of knew, we were kind of all quite competitive and everybody began to kind of turn professional about the same time. A game's a completely different world. I mean, the scale of them, something like Half-Life, was absolutely massive. What people don't really take into account is the dialogue that you hear, whether if you're playing it in America, for example, is English dialogue, for example. But that dialogue's also been recorded in French and German and Italian. and So there's lots and lots of different versions of that same game with uh, lots of different actors. The scale of those games is enormous. I've done a few movies before, but um, the score for a movie or the songs in a movie, are, you know, that kind of work is very small compared to the scale of a game. Because you imagine with a movie, there's a beginning, a middle and an end, and it's predefined. With a game, you decide where you're going to go. So you have to offer so many different options to people. That's why it's so much bigger than, uh, than a movie. For me, it's, um, it's useful to be able to analyse exactly what you're doing, which is a process you have to go through in order to be able to explain to people what you're doing, because somebody like me that works instinctively, um, it's important to note that I've never really had a day's training in terms of music production or music composition in my life. But that has meant that perhaps my approach is slightly different to a lot of people. I do encourage people to run with their instincts, but when you're teaching people, you have to analyse what you're doing so that you can explain that. So for the first time, I guess, I've had to examine what things like intervals are and think about parallel compression in a more detailed way to explain to people what that is. Because I do music for media and music composition, it's quite wide ranging, rather like, I guess, like the, um, my music. And those tasks are, are very, very different but to be able to bring them together, the most useful thing is to, that I've got from it really is, is to be able to analyse exactly what the process is. Because you don't, when you're doing it, you don't really think about it, you just do it. When you're explaining something, you have to break things down into steps and structure. It's useful for them to see that. And it's useful for me to be challenged by them on some of my decision making and Rui's decision making sometimes. What I've been impressed by is, is people's dedication to what they're doing, really mostly. For the most part people are very very focused and what I like to think I've been most influential is getting them to accept other genres other than the one that they're into. Point Blank's ostensibly an electronic music college and it's really good to see when students that previously would only do minimal techno or progressive house or whatever it is you know, get excited when they say that they've been listening to the Manchester Orchestra album 
and they loved it. And they're using some of those ideas. And I think in order for you to progress, you have to take on inferences from other places. And I think generally the most successful producers or musicians or, or songwriters are those that use inferences from as broad a spectrum as possible. Listen to everything and take on board from everything, whether it's rap or funk or rock or hip hop or alt folk or it doesn't matter what it is, there's something there for you somewhere. And work at it and work at it and work at it. If you're going to play guitar, then play guitar until your fingers bleed. If you're going to program, then program until you fall asleep. That's the only way to do it. You have to put the hours in. There are people that say that in order to become an expert at anything, you need to put in 10,000 hours. I completely disagree with that. I think if you multiply that for a factor of 10, then perhaps you're somewhere closer. Because these days, not only do you have to be great at what you do there specifically, but you also have to have an angle on social media in terms of your own promotion. It's just not enough anymore just to be great. So this 10,000 hours that Gladwell was talking about is about one aspect of your career. I quite often tell the students there's not a lot of difference between me and them because I still every day I'm learning, every single day, and they have to, they have to do that as well.